everyone. My name is Cynthia Henry, and um, we're going to learn how to do EndNote today. Um, and we're on the main library website. From uh, this site, we'll navigate to the EndNote. But to get to the library website, you can always type in library.ttu.edu. I know that's not the URL that's up here, but it's a simple one that you can remember, at least I can. And again, it's library.ttu.edu. And then from this main uh, library site, we're going to look in this research and teaching. And then this EndNote, which is under research tools, the second one down. And now here we are um, ready to look at EndNote. We're going to sign in with our e-rater. If you haven't downloaded the product, this is where you could do that. If you're a Windows user, you want to download it using this one. The tricky thing about Windows is uh, download and install. You have to use this extract all step. If you don't do that, it will not work. It is uh, trying to read the license with that extract all. And uh, if you don't have that, it'll always ask you for a license. If you get stuck there, feel free to reach out to me. I'll show you how to uh, get in touch with me in just a second. And then uh, Macs are just a little bit further down, and here's your install. So feel free to get whichever product you need for your computer. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to download this. It's going to take it, and because I'm in Chrome, it's putting it up here at the top. And I'm going to open that. And it's opened uh, a folder. Since I need to do the extract all step, I need to go back to my downloads, right click, extract all, say OK. And now make sure that I'm in the right folder. And I am. It is the one that is extract all, the unzipped one. And then I would just run this. It's going to take a second for that to run through there. I'm going to say yes. Not going to get this in note click. You feel free to get that if you want to. That is actually um, a extension that you can add to uh, your browser. It's available in Chrome and Firefox, I think. I'm not sure if there's an Edge one out yet, but I'm just going to say no because I don't really want it. But you can use it. And then um, I think we're all done with everything else. I uh, will say finish. And so now we're ready to get going. Uh, I'm going to actually use this uh, EndNote online guide now. So I'm going to click on it. And we're on this page. Um, and this is where you can email me or set an appointment if you're having a hard time with EndNote. Feel free to do that. Um, I typically like to use EndNote um, online. Our web, sometimes it's called basic, that's all the same kind of terminology here, this EndNote uh, product. So this is the online account that you can set up that works with the desktop that we just loaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that and sign into that. While we're here, we can see that we have an EndNote handout. Um, I encourage you to download this and we'll use it in just a second. Um, and then this is a PowerPoint and trying to make sure that most of the steps that we covered today are kind of uh, embedded in that PowerPoint so that you can find that information. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, click on this and sign into my online account. If you're new here, you would be doing the registry, 
register uh, button here. I have an account already. I'm going to open that account and sign in. Whoops, maybe we'll sign in. Oh, there I go. I just forgot the last digit. Oh, it's asking me about managing my cookies, so I'll do that quickly. And then it's not so grayed out. You can see it a little bit more. Now I have a lot of uh, items in here. So don't panic. You should probably have a blank screen. Or you might have landed here where this is just some help information for you. Although most people tell me this information is not as helpful as what I, I um, use in my handout. And that's why I created the handout. This seemed to be not as useful. So I just kind of click on that and that kind of hides it. And we should be in all my references. You probably have nothing here, but we're going to fix that. Now I downloaded that. Whoop, I'm going to close up these windows now. I downloaded that EndNote, but uh, it never showed up. So I'm going to open my uh platform here just by searching in the box down here. So I'm going to type in EndNote. And then we see the icon that we were seeing on the download screen. I'm just going to click open. I'm going to say, I agree with this license. Oh, well, there's an update. I'm going to go ahead and download and install that because I bet that is a uh, your uh, experience too. So we'll do that together real quick. So we must be at, yeah, 2.1 now. Sorry guys, I didn't realize we already had an update. Okay, we're gonna finish. Now I'm gonna go ahead and find that again because I don't know what happened to my window. So I'm gonna open that. And so this is just an announcement telling you this now works with Google Docs. Um, and uh, it's just an add-on when using that uh, product. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ignore this today right now. So a lot of times you may have landed here. If this is the first time that you've ever um, uh, had a note, then you would probably want to do create a new library. Um, I um, have a whole um, library, so but that is not on this computer. So let's see. I might go ahead and do the create a new library too. And we can do that together. And then it's going to ask us here to save it. And it doesn't matter where you save that because, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, put mine on the C drive. So hopefully this doesn't have a problem. You won't really use that file again. This is going to be running in the background. So put it wherever you think is useful. You don't need it to be on the desktop. If you want it to be in one drive, that's fine. I just didn't want to sync with my other one, so that's why I've chose to do this. So I'm going to say, okay. Okay. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. Okay. Okay. All right, so here is my um, items. Oh, my window. I'm going to open this a little bit and we can see the whole thing together. And um, some things that we want to make sure we're doing, especially if you have an online account, we can go ahead and set some of that stuff up. Um, I'm going to click on the edit and preferences. And then we want to make sure we sync. We're going to enable sync. I'm going to type in my email address that I just created on the web version that we were looking at. Here. So I'm going to put it in here. 
So if you've created an account, feel free to do that. I got to get my glasses so I can see now that it's super tiny. And then let me make sure I have my account right here. I'm going to say OK. It's authorizing. I'm going to say OK here. I'm going to make sure this is checked. So that means anytime I open this in there here on the desktop, um, it will automatically check with the online account and sync automatically. Um, and then I'm going to say apply. And OK. So now it's going to actually pull in some information from my online account. And I may not want to trigger that yet because I have so many. It will take a while for that to populate. Um, but to do that for yourself, the first time, you have to click library and then sync. And I'm not going to do that because, like I just said, um, but if you have one or two online and you want to go ahead and sync that, you can. Or we can go ahead and pull some information in. So I'm just going to open that window again that has our instructions. I'm going to go ahead and download this handout. And um, you can see what it is. And you can follow the steps right along with me if you want. This teaches you how to move citations in um, and also how to use it in Google Scholar. And then if we need to cover PubMed, we can. It's a little bit uh, different. So Google Scholar and PubMed are slightly different than every other one, but everything else is good. And we'll talk about the SiteWire Write plugin in Word and how to insert things in Word and then uh, how to group things. We just covered the sync with our online account, um, how to open a library, and then we'll also cover this fine full text, which I think is useful. Um, and then the, the rest here is just some things if you needed to uh, do for some extra, like maybe you have a whole zip file of PDFs, you could pull them in this way. Um, the APA 7th, uh, when it first came out, was not loading automatically. It should be loading now. And uh, we will look at that to make sure. Um, but otherwise, those are the steps. So I just wanted you to kind of see what we're going to be doing here and how to use that. I'm actually going to move it to the other screen because I don't necessarily need it most of the time. But I will need it when we set up the fine full text. OK, so I'm going to be back into our um, desktop app. So this is a desktop app. And this is the online. Uh, account. Um, I'm going to actually move some uh, items into here so you can see how that goes. And then we'll sync them up to my um, uh, online account. And you'll be able to see how that works for your account as well. And so now I just need a new browser so we can find some resources to move in here. So um, Again, we're back on the library website because I want to uh, find some articles to move in there. I'm just going to grab this um, database, Academic Search Complete. It is a pretty broad-based database. And if you don't know what, to, what database to be searching, this is a good place to start. Otherwise, you may want to get into your personal librarian's um, icon here and then find your college and then find the databases. So like I cover the College of Human Sciences and Education. So uh, Human Sciences, then I can find any of these. Let's just say Nutritional Sciences. And these are the databases that would be useful for it. OK, and then I'm going to click on the double T to get back on the main page. And we can just use this academic search complete. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to open the database for me. And here we are. I can click on the show all, and that tells me that's academic search complete, not EBSCO. So I, I try to point that out because um, everybody says they've been searching in EBSCO, but we have probably 300 databases from EBSCO, and uh, that's a lot of different databases. So it's always best to know which database you're searching, and, and in this case, it's academic search complete. EBSCO is the vendor, like a big, large vendor of a lot of databases. 
kind of like Nabisco produces a lot of different products and Oreo is the cookie that we want to be eating. So academic search complete is the cookie and Nabisco or vendor, EBSCO is the large vendor. So I think that helps a little bit. I'm gonna click on advanced search. I just like to use that search. So feel free to do that if you want. And then here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the peer reviewed. Um, and that way we can move uh, some journal articles across their citations across to Inuit. So let's see what we could be searching for today. Um, maybe we can look for, I don't know, some motor skills. I have a lot of motor skills in my um, account, in my EndNote account. And let's see, child development. Of course, it can be anything that you want to be putting here. You don't have to follow this part of the process with me. If you want to look for something that might be useful to you, feel free to do so. I'm going to go ahead and click search now. And uh, then I might go ahead and narrow my date range over here. If I was doing some real searching, I might pull it up to like 2019. And uh, then I get us about the last five years. I know we're right here at the end of 2023. I really like this search to be a little bit less. Like I might add another term if I was doing some real searching here. Um, but it'll work for our purposes today. I like that to be about 100. And so then that means I've really got some really great quality right there at the top. And then the relevance is related to the keywords I've put up here. If it's this large, we probably need to narrow it down a little bit or I'd have to dig through a lot. And I don't want to dig through a lot. I hope you're not digging through a lot. And then if it got too small, I would say maybe you needed to uh, look at your key terms and think about uh, you know, broadening it back out. If you ever get stuck with a database, feel free to reach out to your personal librarian, um, wh whoever's over your college or your department, and uh, then we could make suggestions for your databases or your keywords. Okay, so let's just pretend like I'm gonna take this one. I found that it's right on target for what I wanted to be looking for. I'm gonna move over here and click on this little blue icon, folder icon. It changes to yellow. And now you can see that it actually put it over here in this folder view. And you can see it is adding there. This folder view and this folder view is the same view. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, if, if you can see this one and you wanna use it, feel free. If you've lost this folder view, sometimes that happens, um, then you can always use this folder at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and pull over a few. So I'm just gonna take these first three here. I'm gonna to go to my folder view. Now, if I was doing some real searching, I might have dug through, you know, I don't know, the first 10, 20, 30, 40, and picked something. So the first one I added in here may have been okay. It may not have been great, but it was something I was just starting to look at. Um, but then the rest might be really good. So I might come back in here and use this screen as what I want to pick through. Um, but if I know I want them all, I can just use this select all at the top. Now, every database has a different way how they mark their um, articles for you to uh, move. And so um, if you get stuck in a database and you don't know how to mark them, let us know and we can definitely help you figure that out. So I've marked all of these. So all three of these will move together. I'm going to click on export. And then I'm going to use this top one here. This RIS format, that is uh, the file format that computers know how to read a citation. So it is usually .RIS, just like you might see dot, um, .doc or dot .ppt for a PowerPoint. Um, or, yeah. Um, so this RIS, um, this allows the computer to remember, oh, so every database puts their year and their date and their title in a slightly different place, right? So the I, RIS just makes sure that it's labeling, this is the year data. And so then that moves into EndNote in the year space. This is the title data that moves into the title space. This is the, um, you know, uh,
journal title. And so you can move those around. Okay, so now I'm going to not check this because if I've spent 30 minutes pulling together this research, I don't want to lose it if for whatever reason there is just a little bit of a glitch. I don't have that happen a lot, but I just like to not have that checked. Now I'm going to click save. And it's telling me those number of items to be saved are three. And I'm going to click save. And it's put it up here at the top. Um, that's where Chrome stores it. That's where Firefox stores it. I'm sorry, I don't know where Edge stores it. I'm not, I don't use Edge that much. But if you get stuck, you need help figuring out where that is, let me know and we can figure that out. So I'm just going to double click on this. And it's going to bring this little box open. Now it's bringing that box open because I actually have both products open, right? I have the EndNote open on my desktop and have the online account open and signed into. If I didn't, it would automatically put it into my desktop, um, but this is a way that you can choose where you want it to go. I'm gonna leave it in EndNote, not the online version, and say, okay. Did I say okay? There we go. So now it quickly put me back into the desktop version of EndNote, and you can see we've moved the three um, citations over and let me just kind of move this around a bit. I like it to kind of sit like this and I don't necessarily like uh, this one here but if you like it you can leave it. I kind of close this because I can always get back to that just by clicking on here if I needed to um, and here is the abstract and I can get back into this if I wanted to. So this has just moved the citation over. And you can see the whole citation information under this edit. And I can change that if for whatever reason, I realize that, oh, uh, the pages are wrong and I need to put in real page numbers or oh, the volume is really, you know, 241. And so uh, occasionally you'll see that, but not often. But if you needed to, more likely you would want to look at your title um, and see if it is capitalized appropriately. So, of course, in APA, um, it doesn't want anything else capitalized except for the first uh, word in the title or anything after a subtitle. So the A is appropriate. But sometimes they come over and they'll have like the T capitalized, the S capitalized, so you'd have to change that. Then in the journal title, they should all be capitalized. And so this is appropriate this way. Um, but if I needed to, I would need to fix it here, not in Word when we look at that later. So, okay. Um, if I wanted to attach the PDF here, I'd have to go back to the database. Go click back here. I'm going to click back one more time because I want to be back to my results list. And then, so this first one here has the PDF. I would just go ahead and get this PDF download it, save it, and then I can put in EndNote. This is the right citation for it. Click Attach PDF, find it. Should be in my downloads, I think, here. Let's see if we can find that. Here's my download. So now here the PDF is attached to it. And I know that, uh, no, I don't want to make any changes to that yet. Oh, maybe I did, sorry. Whoops. Got to go to here. Yes. Open. Now say yes. And so it has the little um, paperclip over here. So anytime I have the paperclip over here, that means that the PDF is already attached. Now, the nice thing about uh, EndNote is you can do some citation uh, information here, like you can read the article from here. And I kind of let the screen be split like this a little bit clearer. Or if I want to pop this out, all I have to do is click out and it will pop it into its own window. 
and see if I can move that around a little bit. I might even open it totally. And then if I wanted to highlight something, I just need to highlight what I want to highlight and then use this little comment kind of icon. If you click on that, a whole new menu opens and I can say, oh, I want to highlight that text. And so then now it's highlighted. Um, I can also drop a little note there if I wanted to do a little sticky note, I can click on this and it will add a little sticky note wherever I drop it and I can double click it and it will have a little box over here that I can now um, put uh, something in here. So maybe it's lit review that I want to put in here. Maybe I want to make sure that this is in my lit review. Um, maybe I want to highlight uh, something that is looking at young children with developmental disabilities, DDs. So maybe I want to add DDs here. Then I can close that and I can close this and I'll say yes. So then um, that information is stored and I can search for it later if I wanted to. So um, let's go ahead and create a group here. I'm gonna click on group, create a group. And then I'm gonna just say maybe um, DD, cause I wanna make sure it's not messing with my other folders. Um, or I might have motor skills here, or I might have the class that I'm using it for, or topic or semester, however you want to store your research. So once I type it in there and just click somewhere else, we now have the folder DD, and then I can just grab all of these together. Um, if you don't know how to highlight all of them together, I just, in Windows, you just have to hit the Control, and I bet in Mac it's just Command, and then now I can drag these into that group. So now we have three or in the DD group. Now I do want to make sure when I import these that I move them somewhere because the imported references is just the new references. You wanna make sure that they're stored somewhere in the all. And so look, that has double, doubled it. That's funny. I hadn't seen that do that before. Because uh, it usually doesn't add the, the it just it has them. That's that's interesting. We'll have to see why that is. Because we would want to not have all these duplicates. In fact, I might go ahead and delete these. And I just clicked delete. And so there we are. But you can store these in multiple folders if you want to. So maybe you're doing something in a class with motor skills or child development. And then you also are about to write a dissertation that also covers child development. So you can put them in multiple places if you want to. Um, okay, so uh, let's see what else we want to do. Uh, I was trying to think where our next step might be. We got 3M from a database. We can go ahead and look and see um, back on our browser here. Let's go ahead and look at Google Scholar real quickly. I'm just gonna type in Google Scholar. And open it. And I have to make sure it's working with the library to uh, move these over. So I'm gonna set that up real quick. Um, under the little three lines, I'm gonna click on the settings. And then here, I would want to change this to RefMan. So I don't understand why it's called RefMan. Um, so I can't give you that clue, but RefMan means .ris. So we want to use the same uh, uh, extension to move those citations over from Google Scholar. Now, some people like to say, oh, I want to use the EndNote. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Depending on the version that is happening and what is stored in Google, I always see that the RefMan works. So I typically encourage people to use RefMan. And then that way you only need to remember, you know, refmanris.ris to um, get anything from any place. Um, so we saw how to use that in a database. We're now using it in Google Scholar. And then you can uh, save this. 
And so I'm going to click save and it's going to throw me back onto the main screen of Google Scholar. But I want to set one other thing up for um, Google Scholar is under that same three line menu, we're going to go to settings again. We're going to go to library links. And I'm going to type in Texas Tech here. So I'm going to make it work with a library search. And I'm going to click search here. So I want to highlight, check mark that Texas Tech University Libraries FT at TTU Lib. That means full text at TTU Lib. So I'm going to check mark that. If that world count is checked, that's fine. Um, that's just a large catalog that most of the world participates in. So feel free to um, leave that if you find the uh, uh, a book that way and we own it, it will route you back to our library. So I'm going to click save. And now I'm going to run that same search that we were doing in the database. So let's start out with motor skills. Sorry. Motor skills and child development. There we go. So what I'm really looking at on this page is, um, let's talk about it. So it's kind of overwhelming to me. So let's see what this looks like. This is the article that I want to maybe be reading or looking at. But instead of clicking here, because if I click there, it, unless I'm on campus, it may will uh, want to tell me, oh, you need to pay $35.95 for it. I don't want you paying for anything, right? That's why we set up this FT at TTU Lib. So if we click here, it's going to open our links resolver and get us back into the library resources. And then I'll find the PDF for us. Um, and most of the time, that's how it's going to happen. And then we can see the PDF is here and we can download it. Or if these don't populate, because this is a new tool that we've just started, it's called Library Key to have these sitting here, then um, you may have to look in one of these collections. But that's what it's telling you is we have this article in two different collections and it tells you the information that you need to know about that collection. So this started, this journal, Child Development and Perspectives, started, we started collecting it in 2007, and it's in Academic Search Complete, but the most first current year is not available. That's called an embargo, and so then that means that we couldn't find anything in there from 2023, so we would need to know that. Um, and this one doesn't have that kind of connotation, so if we really needed something uh, in the last year, we would use widely. But if there's neither of these are sitting here, I'll say no full text, and then you would be able to use the request it. And that request it really interacts with our document delivery account. And if you haven't set up your Iliad account from our document delivery department, um, that's all interlibrary loan, ILL, that's all the same kind of um, verbiage, then you can um, go ahead and, and set that up. I'll show you that right at the end because we're not really here to talk about all that, but uh, I like to mention it. So I'm just going to grab this PDF so that I'll have it. And I'm going to download it. But we still haven't put the citation in. So now we have to be back into our library account. And because Google Scholar doesn't populate to a new window, you have to click back. And so right here, down below, we'll see this import into RefMan. So the only thing that's really annoying about Google Scholar is that it will only let you move one at a time. Anything else, any other database lets you move multiple at a time. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to click on this. It's going to throw it up here. It's going to say scholar.ras. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to double click on that. It's going to let me pick. I'm going to say OK because I want it to go into my account. So now you see it moved to the three we have moved previously. And then it's moved uh, this one here. Since I have this um, open and it has the attachment part open, I'm going to go ahead and attach that um, PDF that we just downloaded um, from the library. So this is what we had opened, and we know that this is this um, information here. And so, um, and we can make notes here if we want to. I'm going to kind of open this back up. And since this is a new 
uh, library, did you see how small the title was? So I may not necessarily need the reference, the last update or the reference type, but I really want to see the title personally. So I'm gonna move that over and see. So now I have what I think is the best um, pieces here is the authors, the year, the title to the article, and the title to the journal. This last update, that just means when you put it in here, it doesn't matter really uh, related to the citation. And then let's go ahead and look at this citation. It looks like we're doing pretty good um, with our capitalization, so we're not seeing anything that we need to edit. But if I did, I can just come in here and type right into that box. And uh, let's see if it was a capital S, I could just say lowercase s. And then when I click to the left, it should save it. So you want to make saves? Yes. Now, um, I think everybody probably saw the save button here. Um, that's something they added because people couldn't get the concept that they could just type in the box. So you can always add, click the save here. So don't stress. Whichever is best for you, feel free to use it. Okay, so then um, I think the next part, let's go ahead and quickly try to use PubMed because I think quite a few of us are uh, going to use that tool. So I'm going to get back on my browser again. And we're going to use um, the library website because I can get to PubMed just by Googling it, but then it doesn't know that I'm a student or a faculty member and it will ask me to pay for materials or not let me see them. So I'm gonna get into the databases A to Z and type in PubMed and then click online access and then run a search here. Now, <laughs> PubMed is not the most user-friendly, but once you kind of start figuring it out, then it, it, it becomes better. So I'm gonna type in motor skills again and child uh, development, click search. And then here on this screen, um, I might update my date range to the last uh, 10 years, let's say, or let's do five years. That's what we've been doing is 19. And I can mark some of these over here, just automatically the last five years, last 10 years. I want to make some different kind of filters. I could do additional filters here by opening them. Um, and then here in this um, database, you're going to click the little check mark box. Sorry, the check box. So I'm going to click on that and it will add it. I'm just going to grab these first three. And then I'm going to send to citation manager, I'm going to select what I want. If you want to move all the results, it will let you move, I think, up to a thousand. So be aware of that. It may let you move more now if they've been working on that. You can do all the results on this page or just what you selected. And then I'm going to create a file and it's going to put it up here. Now it is actually send it in this in BIB, but that will still work for us. Um, and I, I don't know if it has a RIS uh, format to use. So I'm going to double click on this again, just like we've been doing. I'm going to choose EndNote. It's going to move it over here. Okay. So uh, you can see we have some in there unfiled. What I just moved in the last two, the Google Scholar and then the three from there. I can move all of these into... Uh, my D&D if I want to do that real quick. And you can see these are two different articles, but same authors. If I move those all in there. You can see we don't have anything as unfiled. And uh, again, the re imported references just get overrided. So make sure that you move things around before uh, you, you don't know what is, you know, where it's going or what's happening. Okay, so that is how to move some things from a database. Let's go ahead and set up some other things. Um, let's go ahead and look at how to use our um, find full text. I think that is something we would all want to look. It is, again, on our handout. 
it's down on page uh, five. And you have to type this exactly all the way to the question mark. Oh, sorry. See, it's going to try to run it, but it's not really going to do it. And then oh, we need to scoot back down to five. And then all the way down to the equals. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll show you how to do it as well. And it's really hard to copy and paste that because it triggers a, a reaction. So you just have to kind of type it out. But under edit, under preferences again, we're going to look for a find full text. We're going to put in the open URL path is uh, that information that I was saying over here. I'm going to try to get some of it to copy, but I'm not sure I'm going to get it. I'm going to try one more time. See if I do that. Yeah, put it over here. No, nope, it only copied the top line, not the bottom line. Maybe I can fix that on the handout. Maybe I will try and make it sure that it's just text and then it won't have that icon there. So, um, let me just quickly type that a little bit. So we can all type together. Let's hope that we get it. I'm uh, notorious for not doing great at uh, typing this. Let's Libras and group right there, I think, dot com. Make sure that you have the capitals when you need the capitals. And then we're going to authenticate with, um, that next little bit. Hmm. Nope. Make sure you put in semicolons, not, uh, I mean, colons, not semicolons, what I was meaning. That's uh, L I B. Okay, I think I did all right. I hope you did too. I'm going to click on automatically find uh, anything that is newly imported um, references, and then I'm going to click apply, and then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm just going to open all my references. That will be good. And then I'm going to trigger this. So under references now, we're going to do find full text, find full text again. Um, let's see if that's going to work. Walk it through. It's looking. I found one. It does take it a second. Okay. And sometimes you'll see a flash, and that means it's kind of thinking through. So it looks like it only found the one. So if I really wanted these others, I would need to make sure that I found them from the database and attached them. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, let's go ahead and open our Word and see how all this work will um, really benefit us in um, writing. So I'm just going to open my Word down here. Say open. And because, and because uh, we downloaded the platform from uh, the library, it should have 
already put in the 21 in your Word. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And then I'm going to pretend like I'm typing a paper. And I need to cite something. So I put my cursor where I want the citation to go. And then I'm going to click insert. And now I can look for anything that I have. Um, I can look for the folder. I can look for the title. I can look for an author. I can look for a year. I can look for a topic. So I'm just going to go motor skills. And then hmm, let's see here. Let's go, try this one. I'm going to click insert. I was going to think for a second. And it has put it in this way, but it should be annotated. It doesn't look like the annotation is there. A lot of times annotation will include the um, abstract. We want this icon here. So the second box in this ribbon, this drop down that says annotated, we want that to say APA 7. I'm going to talk about APA 7th because um, that's the standard on campus is APA 7th unless a professor says to you it needs to be in something else like MLA or CSA, whatever it is. If you need a different item added here, feel free to reach out to me. I can help you figure that out. It's a little complicated, so we're not going to cover it today, but um, we have the some basics here. We have APA, author date, and Chicago, and numbered. Um, so if you need that. Okay, let's say I needed to add whoop, some more here. Typing. I cannot type and talk at the same time. And then I'm going to add here. I'm just going to grab that first one. And so you can see in APA, they have it alphabetized. In numbered, they actually say whichever one you set, cited the first one, that will be the number one. And you can see that's just how simple it is to change between styles. So that is why the really added benefit. Let's say you've done all this work in your dissertation and now you want to publish it, but the publisher wants it in a slightly different style. You can just add that style or change to that style and it's automatically in the right um, format. So I'm just gonna space a bit. I like to give myself a little bit of room to write and then I can just keep on writing. InNote is smart enough that if you move paragraphs around and change things up and you are no longer wanting to have this first paragraph, you can take that out. It will update and just have the citations that you have left. So. Let's say we wanted to add a page, like this is a direct quote. We needed to click on that citation, then we need to um, edit and manage the citation. Then we can say, oh, here's the pages. That was on page 33, or whatever page it is. I haven't even looked at the citation. Oh, it's 136, so let's try that. We'll say that it's on 136, and then we'll say, okay and then it will automatically add the page for the quote that you need in there. Of course, you need to put in your quotes over here, but just wanted you to be able to um, do what you need to do there. Okay, so that is the basics of how to use EndNote, why you want to be using EndNote because it's so useful here at the end and how you would get things uh, into your EndNote account. Now I haven't synced mine, um, but I think it will take a long time, so I don't really want to do that. But if you have not clicked sync yet, then you would see back on your um, now online account here, you would have however many ones that you pulled over. If you were matching me, you would probably have seven in there. Okay, and so then, Again, from this page, you can look at the PowerPoint. You can email me if you need help or if you got stuck anywhere, and you could um, schedule an appointment with me directly just by clicking on this, picking the time that you wanted to, 
These appointments are usually 30 minutes long, so uh, be aware of that. And you can bring in your laptop to my office or we can Zoom, of course. So um, don't let that stress you out. I can't think of anything else that I wanted to cover with us this morning. I think that's all you need to know about EndNote and you should be good to go. Thanks.